This is Moneyline Mania with Chaz and the crew. Chaz is back, and we have the great and powerful World Wide West. He is on. He's been nonstop hitting on numbers, and if you guys aren't listening, you're not making any money. Chaz, how are you doing, man? If you don't believe we're good at what we do, you just go back and watch the last eight years from the beginning. It's really cool. You don't even have to be cocky about it. Just go listen and come back, and then you can say, well, you're good. Oh, I know I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Moneyline Mania. When you named it, I didn't really appreciate it, but I am now betting more Moneyline Mania. So we followed John from GMF Sports this summer and we're talking a lot of baseball and you're seeing minus 330s and minus 400s and minus 320s it was crazy what the Yankees and the Astros and the Dodgers and the Braves at one point and the Mets were going off at so when you see the ability to get a minus 170 on a football game and all of a sudden you don't have to worry about the backdoor cover it was the Chiefs Charger game was a fine example I'm in the double tree in Fort Lee pretty close to where this audience is in Fort Lee New Jersey Watching a game that it doesn't matter, I ain't losing. If you're getting four and a half, you're nervous. If you're giving four and a half, you're nervous. I had the money line media play. I was winning no matter what. So thank you for establishing that betting money lines is not necessarily a bad thing. Chaz, you do well in close games, unlike the Chargers. There you go. 33% gain uh, on a football game, you know, that's not a bad thing. If you were to take that 33%, go on the reverse. Everybody look at your 401k. How's the 33% feel when you lose it? So yeah. It ain't so bad when you're on the winning side of it. And it really is. It's a relative thing. We talk about it with the horses all the time. People complain they paid 420. First of all, 420 is a great number, but I believe in waking bank. The the other aspect of it is you lay two dollars to get four twenty. If you're betting minus one thirty five, you're not getting four twenty for two. I throw some horse racing in there. I love horse racing and talking to West probably bets ten times more horse races than I do, but there's something about horse racing that is just really cool. It really does affect how you look at odds in other sports, right, Wes? It does. Horse races, there's lottery tickets all over the place. But if you bet enough horses, you're perfectly okay with taking even money. I don't know how I decided to call this segment Moneyline Mania, but... It just came out of your mouth, because up to that point, that was not a fair assessment <laughs> of what Wes and I talk about. We have morphed into what you wanted us to be. Yeah. Good job, Errol. Well, thank you. I, I don't that. just morph for anybody, Errol. I love the compliments. We have you back. The bottom line, if your audience has listened to us since we yes. started, they're up decent money. If their kahunis grew when Wes went on his little run, they really are up money. I might have to start betting, and I might have to reach out to Wes privately and start making some some bets because I need to make some of that money too. Hit him up at 151 Sports Investing. There you go. We are going to start. Wes is going to make his picks. Chaz has a couple of picks. Here we go. I'm going out to the Washington Stanford game. I am not picking on Washington. I'm actually picking on Michigan State. The only reason we are getting a 13 and a half point spread here two weeks ago, this game would have been a much lower spread. This game probably would have been in the six range. But what Washington just did to Michigan State is what's elevating this spread. So we are jumping on opportunity. I like to look at the line movement. 66% of the tickets are on Washington and the point spread is 13 and a half and it hasn't moved. That means the house is totally comfortable being exposed on the other side of the ball. So I love Stanford in this spot. Stanford isn't losing to anybody by more than 13 and a half. There is no way Washington is going to hold Stanford to 40 rushing yards the way that they did Michigan State. They caught Michigan State after two very local games and then some abusive long distance travel. I think that Michigan State was a false number 11, and that's why Washington was able to do what they did. I like the way that Stanford's O-line matches up against Washington's D-line. Their entire roster worth of offensive linemen only has three players under 300 pounds, and two of them are 298 and 290. Stanford is going to run the ball for more than 40 yards. They're going to keep Michael Phoenix Jr. on the sidelines. I believe that Stanford has a legitimate shot of winning the game outright. Forget the 13 and a half points. Take the 13 and a half points. Relax. I think Stanford's going to get an early lead and they're going to make a real game of it. This Sunday is a difficult one, and my members on the Discord page at Chicago Options Trader, they're not super happy with me because I threw a lot of games out there because what I'm trying to do, I'm basically cost averaging. We're trying to buy down the percentage impact of a loss, and we're willing to negotiate some of that upside just because this is a difficult week. The game that I really like the most, I gave the Jets a good hard look. I like the way that the Jets have played. 
I think that the Cincinnati O-line, what the doctor ordered to get a little bit more sacks on the board, that game is worth a good hard look. It's down to six. I like the hook there, so I'm staying away from it. But if it goes up to six and a half or even seven, I'm probably going to be a buyer at that point. The game that I'm making a call on right here is Green Bay against Tampa. I love watching the line movement and the public versus the house and where the house is comfortable being exposed. 58% of the tickets are on Tampa. The spread opened at minus three, and now the spread is, is minus one. I thought Green Bay was the better team all along. There's a lot of question marks on the offensive side of the ball for Tampa. Brady, there's something going on there, whether he's not committed, is committed. I vividly remember two seasons ago, a, a meeting between these two where Green Bay was embarrassed. Rodgers doesn't forget about things like that. It is basically now a pick It's one point, and it's at even money. I like Green Bay to go in there and just smoke Tampa. I had an under in this game. I know people hyped up the quarterback matchup, but I actually think it'll be a low-scoring game. Do you think that way, too? I don't. And the only reason I don't think it's under the 42, because in order for Green Bay to win, they will have broken Tampa's defense in some fashion. I think that Tampa's going to score points. I think that Green Bay is good for 28-plus in this game, and I don't think you're going to get Brady in any situation where he scores less than 14, 17. So I like a double-digit victory for Green Bay here. But if I'm correct about Green Bay winning and winning convincingly, that 42 falls. If Tampa wins, then I believe it goes up. I picked Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay. I think this is the game that's going to break out, figuring out his wide receivers. And as the season progressively moves forward, those wide receivers are going to get open, and he is going to make plays. He is the best quarterback in the NFL. Anybody that doubts it, just look the last two years. He's two-time MVP. Look at the wide receivers he's thrown to. Even last year, he had one wide receiver. The rest, you probably couldn't even name. And, and by the way, besides... Adams, not one of his wide receivers or tight ends were in the top 100 in the league last year. That tells you how good Aaron Rodgers really is. In fact, you go back 20 years, Green Bay. Favre did it too. There's a long list of non-Hall of Fame, non-perennial Pro Bowl wide receivers that Favre created and Rodgers has been doing the same thing. I live in Kansas City. I watch the Chiefs. MVS got a pretty decent sized contract from Aaron Rodgers throwing him the ball. He's three on the Chiefs roster. The Brett Favre situation. What are your thoughts to what he has done? Does he go to jail? I know he's one of the greatest quarterbacks ever play the game, but this is a sad story for Brett Favre and for somebody who's made a lot of money in the NFL doing this to children is despicable it was a classless move it was fraud it was embezzlement it was a lot of money a lot of good guys don't take money for doing what he was getting paid for and he didn't do it he took the check and didn't do it so yeah it's a double bad thing it's going to cause a lot more controversy relative to some of the controversy that already exists in today's world. And it's going to force punishment's hand in an unnatural way that it would have fallen in this particular scenario. I have seen different guys, big names, get away with something like this. And Craig Cart went to jail for two years. He really got away with it because of who he was as a broadcaster. And he's making a lot of money now. He's now out of jail. He's working for Fox. He has his own show in the morning. He's on WFAN, SNY. This guy is making more money than he did before he went to jail. It doesn't matter what you do if you're in front of everybody. You're the superstar. You're the face of that position. Unfortunately, I think Brett Favre is going to get away with this. It'll go to court. They'll punish him, but what is he going to get? Five months? The text messaging is what I just can't wrap my mind around. I personally don't like leaving voicemails. You can listen to it over and over, and there's so much blank information. Wes is too good looking for prison. Thank you for that. I've been told on the face for radio. There's a reason these guys don't show the faces on the show. <laughs> People can make money off of you. You're always going to get a second chance. Yeah. So I don't know who's going to be making money off of Brett Favre. Tarnished legacy is an understatement, I think, at this point. Brett Favre should just give NIL deals to all the Mississippi volleyball players. You can't tell me after a guy who did what he did comes out of jail and you give him the opportunities that he had. And I'm not taking shots at Craig Carton. I have a lot of respect for him as a broadcaster. He's achieved all his goals. Everything that you want to see a person do in radio. He has done. But what he did, it's really washed away, and he got away with it. Nobody even talks about it anymore. He talks about it. He has his own show on Saturdays, which he talks about his betting problems, and he's trying to help people. Only reason why he's doing that is because he's getting paid for it. There's no betting problem. There's a losing problem. Yep. Yeah. Craig Carter should have been what? listening to your what picks. A, when you're on Worldwide Sports Radio Network with us, the losing problem kind of goes away. So let's talk about yes. Wes's two plays. Mm -hmm. I got the Easy Sports date in front of me. He likes Stanford. If I'm betting this game and he likes Stanford, I'm going with the over, too. Stanford's going to have to score some points to win this game. The over is 62. That's huge. Yeah. you got teams that give up 30 and 40. It's the Pac-12. 
12, for heaven's sake. They can literally have 47 points at halftime. And then the other game, he likes the Packers. One thing on the Easy Sports Day, Tampa Bay at home, 6-1 and one against the spread, 9-2 and two in their last 11. However, none of those games were against Aaron Rodgers. And that's what's special about Aaron Rodgers. He can change your view with a blink of an eye, just how talented he is with the football. I have five plays this week in the NFL. I almost hit a five-teamer today. If I can go 4-1 on one of these plays, I win a couple bucks, and you guys will win a couple bucks too. I got Kansas City, Buffalo, Detroit on the money line, I might add. Philadelphia and under in the Green Bay, Tampa Bay. I'm going to continue following the teams that have been scoring points so far this year at anything after two games. It's irrelevant. You could have 38-point averages for teams like Baltimore, and you could have Tampa Bay's average in given six. Look at the number one team is Jacksonville for defense. Ah, look who they played. If the four of us lined up against the Colts, and we got seven guys that we found, that we probably have a shot at keeping them under 14 points. They're just not that very good of a team. You got to go very, very light. But I'm going to hop on Kansas City, Buffalo, and Detroit on their team totals. I like team totals. I like them for one reason and one reason only. You can't come back and lose. You could be up by 28. Look at Baltimore. I had Miami and Arizona on a money line parlay. I told the guys, because I was so busy, I didn't really reach out. After the fact, I never like to brag after the fact. What good is it to tell you I won? I should have told you who I was betting. I would have threw away that ticket with Miami on it if I was in a casino with Wes. I would have tossed it right in the trash. I would be going digging in that trash. So I hit the parlay, but with a team total, you can't lose. Once you win it, you win it. There's no backdoor cover on a team total. And then I'm doing a lot of money lines. Four team where I'm going Buffalo in the over and Philly in the over. But I'm doing money line because when you use a big favorite, you could make the betting 200 to win $90 go away by adding a team or two. So with this four team, I'm basically saying I think Buffalo's going to win, Philly's going to win, they're going to score some points. I won't get the 12 to 1, but I'll probably get, what, 7 to 1 on that, West? Plus 660. I'll take that all day long. 2 and 0 oh in money line plays this year. I got Detroit, but when I went on my little vacation, I did get a parlay in. I have a division parlay. So mm. I've got Buffalo, Kansas City, the Rams, and Tampa Bay on a four teamer to win their divisions, and it pays plus 1249, and what I'm doing is I'm going to ride them all year on the money line. So I got them tomorrow. First half plays plus 608, 485. Green Bay wins the game. I'm going to lose that parlay but I'm taking Tampa Bay only because I'm not thinking. These are the teams I think are going to win their division. I'm going to bet them every single week on the money line, and my goal is to win enough money between now and the end of the season that those were free bets, and then I sell one of them on prop swap. Bada boom, bada bing. I could lose that bet and still have won more money. And anytime you win money and your team loses, Wes, that's what we do good at. I am going to bet against the money line. I really believe Miami is going to beat Buffalo. Outright. Do you really? I absolutely do. I love what I see and they're playing in Miami. That's an advantage to them. I do believe it will be on the over. I think Miami's going to shock everybody and they're going to take sole custody of that first place in the AFC East. Their pass defense or lack thereof is Mm. no concern of yours? Not at all. Because I think offensively you saw what they did against the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore is a very good defensive team in a second half. And it's not just two. I, I, I think it's going to be very hard for Buffalo to defend Waddle and Tyreek Hill. It's shown the last two games. I know Buffalo, everybody thinks, is the best team in the NFL. I think there's a lot of weaknesses that we haven't seen because they haven't seen high-flying offenses. I think Miami is a high-flying offense, especially for their secondary, and their secondary is still questionable. I really think Miami is going to shock everybody and knock off the Buffalo Bills. Let's go with Jeopardy. Give me NFL for 200. 26, (laughs) 35, 56, 31, 37, 31, 42. Buzzer! What are the last seven amounts of points the Buffalo has put up on Miami? 260 points in seven games. And here's the perfect answer to that. I just think they're due, and I think Miami's for real. Miami had a, a period in the last couple years where we were winning some money, especially in the second half. They were playing really good football. How about the kid's brother doing stuff at Maryland? They uh, do. That's pretty wild that they could have that much talent coming out of one lady. I don't think he is a first round draft pick. I don't even think he's a second round draft pick, but somebody's going to draft him because of who his brother is, and if his brother has this breakout season, 
which we're seeing right now, watch out. Anything is possible. Talia was on the Bama roster. Yes, I mean, he, correct. He played. He left Bama because he wasn't better than Bryce Young. Almost no quarterbacks that are better than Bryce Young. But this Buffalo-Miami game, I'm not touching it mm -hmm. because there's enough validity to your beliefs in Miami in this game. I have a hard time siding against Buffalo here. Of course. Miami just hasn't proven enough on either side of the ball for me to say Miami or Buffalo. This one, I'm a spectator. I would love to see Miami take Buffalo down, but I don't want an angry Buffalo coming to Arrowhead in a couple weeks. <laughs>